the fuck? Learn XGD. What is good, computer gangsters, computer thugs, all manner of computer user. Today, I'm gonna help you make your Linux easier. So, let me show you some utilities and some tips just to get you on the road to Linux stardom. The first item on our list will be the fish shell. This is the fish shell right here, and as you can see, it already says smart and user-friendly command line shell, yada yada yada, you get the fucking deal. Now check out these dazzling features. It will delight you with tab completion, syntax highlighting, and what is it? What was it? 24-bit VGA color, right? What is it? Yep, 24-bit true color. Come on, who could say no to that? Read your mind, allegedly. It's a fortune teller. So what this means in layman's is that it'll actually complete commands that you've typed with either giving you a few options for tab completion or it'll actually complete your command based on your history of that using that command over and over again. So if I've used the same command over and over again with the same arguments, then it'll actually complete that command for me in the future because it's like, hey, you know, you've already done this shit so many times. Let me give you a hand here. In order to install the fish shell, now do this on your corresponding package manager. I'm presuming that you're using Linux Mint because you followed um, my tutorials from my previous videos like a good little chum. So I'll just do the command that we're all used to sudo super user privileges, apt as in app package manager, install as in let's get this shit and fish because you know what i really like fish apparently so type in the password and look at this it's finding my fish and there she blows let's wait for her well that was easy now that i've installed fish you might be wondering how do i fish and no we're not asking about you know tossing a rod into the water and you know waiting for the hook line and sinker not that kind of fish, you dunce. We're actually talking about the fish shell, the very user-friendly command line shell. Duh. If you want to do it, I'm going to I'm going to let you kind of anticipate the drum roll on this one. Are you are you waiting for bait, uh, with bated breath as to what the command is? It's fish. That's it. Bam. That's honestly absolutely amazing and very easy as you can see it's already assisting me as a user because it just loves its user so much type help wow that's it and i type help and it opens this convenient little web page where you can read all of the documentation on how to use fish now i'm not going to provide you with complete tutorial on how to use fish because this is something that you can research on your own and it has a very robust uh you know kind of piece of documentation here and honestly i don't need to read this to you because you're not a toddler and you don't need to be read uh bedtime stories every single fucking night now if you do i'll make a separate channel for that but that's besides the point fish as we know it does all of these things pretty much autonomously and you don't really have to modify it as much as you think you would have to if you want to change the colors and you know add your own um kind of uh you know scripts or maybe you want to add your own abbreviations for your favorite commands go ahead. It's all contained within the documentation. Now we're in the fish shell and you might be asking yourself, I do not want to type the word fish every single time I want to use the fish shell. And that's completely sensible because you would look like a fucking idiot to any passerby staring at your computer and thinking, why is this guy typing the word fish in a command line? Now, if we want the fish shell to start every time we open a terminal, we're going to want to put a little line inside our bash RC file. Bash is just short for the born again shell, and a shell is basically, um, I guess you could say the interface through which you input commands and you directly interface with your computer and the components inside of it. It's basically just a way to get shit done via command line. So what we're going to do in order to get to our bash RC file is first we are going to get to our home. Now I have been absolutely crucified and lambasted and flagellated and completely destroyed for using tilde slash dot slash to get to home. And I am completely aware of the sins that I've committed and going forward I will make sure not to do such a disgusting act ever again. So in, to get to your home you can just do a tilde. I apologize. So let's go and get into our home with just a tilde and then we are going to nano w dot bash rc and the reason why we're going to use nano w is because nano is a text editor that allows us to edit the file and the argument w just means that we're going to write into it. So let's just do that. Bash rc will be located in your home directory with a dot in front of it because it's a sneaky conniving little fucking file and it doesn't want to be found. Now let me see if I can just put fish. I believe that is all I have to do. Now, 
every time I open a terminal, it is the fish. That's it. All you gotta do is put fish in your bash RC. You don't have to put anything in front of it. You don't have to put anything behind it. That is it, just put fish. And every time you start a terminal, voila, the fish terminal. Now you can have all the tab completions in 24-bit VGA color and, and you know, all of the syntax highlighting that you could ever desire in the world. Thank me later. Next up on the list of things to make your Linux experience just that much more bearable is kind of obvious, it's startup applications. Now contrary to popular belief, startup applications isn't actually going to be relegated to applications per se, as in what you would consider a program, like a, a GUI program. Startup applications could literally be any command you want, and you can run it in the terminal if you so desire. So for example, let's get our own little startup application running. So in my startup applications, if I wanted to, let's say, ping the same website every single time I started up my computer, all I would have to do is this. First of all, custom command, name, ping a new command. And now we're not just going to put the command itself because we're not going to see when it's pinging or what it's doing. And if we want diagnostics or debug, or if we just want a visualization of what's happening, then we're just going to put this. We're going to put gnome terminal, and then we're going to put two hyphens, and then we're simply going to put ping gnu.org. And that should be it. Now running this command at all will actually start a separate terminal instance in ping GNU. That's it. Startup applications are extremely useful even if you want to run a command. So whenever you want to run command in Linux Mint or if you have the GNOME terminal at your disposal and you want to run one command, you know, just in the background or if you want to see it, just put GNOME terminal and then hyphen hyphen put the command that you want to run. This makes it so you can run virtually anything on startup. It's really useful. And if you want to run anything else on startup, like an application, then I can do that too. Go through your list of applications and simply choose the one you want to run on startup. Oh, I just know that this is going to start some kind of war with napalm and guns and so many violations of the Geneva Convention in the comments. So let me clarify. I am not against using GUI applications when it's necessary or when it is, you know, as opposed to a more tedious solution via the terminal. I am also not opposed to using the terminal if it is also as opposed to a more tedious solution via a GUI. I think both formats should apply when it's useful. Now, one thing that could be considered tedious is extracting files, and I know all of you are like, I don't know how to use the tar command, I don't know how to use the unzip command, I'm in a, I'm in a stir trying to find my way through this labyrinth of directories and putting this and putting that and all that. Don't worry, your guardian savior, Lernix, is here because I am going to show you something absolutely wonderful. Now, you have Linux Mint, which means that your Linux comes prepackaged with Flatpak. Flatpak is just a way to install applications. It is a desktop agnostic uh, application store, I guess you could say. So, Flathub is where all of the applications are stored. I am in Flathub. We're going to get an application called PZip. PZip is something that you've probably seen if you've ever used Windows. It is something like 7-zip and it is something like um, WinZip. Except you don't have an annoying ass window asking you to purchase the premium version every five fucking seconds. So, we're gonna get PZip. PZip, and as you can read right here, free file, archiver, utility, open extract, yada yada yada. It basically, it extracts and archives whatever the fuck you want. Now, you can also copy these commands, which is what I'm going to do, but you can also alternatively literally just press the install button. But since I like to, uh, you know, deliver pain unto myself because I am Jesus Christ and I want to be crucified, I'm going to put the command from here. We're going to install it. Yes. Yes. Don't mind all the bullshit here. It's just installing it. Well, installing pzip finished like nothing, and now if I want to go to pzip, all I got to do is go to accessories and open it, and that's pretty much it. Now, if I want to, let's say, archive a file, we're just going to put convert, and we're going to put whatever secret files we got, and that should be about it. If I want to archive it as a zip file, bam, add to separate archives, you know, these options are up to you to tinker with. Now that I've zipped my secret files, all of them are safely sequestered inside of this little archive. Now, if I want to extract an archive, all I got to do is put my secret files in there and extract it in a new folder. That should be it. And it would look something like this. Now, um, you're, um, yeah, 
you um so if you don't want to use the command line to extract shit because either you're lazy or you keep on forgetting how to use the tar command and the unzip command just use pzip and there's also a convenient little shortcut for it right here bam if i want to open boobs with pzip that's it all right fellas this is the victory lap the last thing i'm going to show you as to how to make your linux experience that much easier is arguably the most useful utility on the list and that would be tldr as in too long don't fucking read there are so many commands in linux that you will need extensive amounts of documentation for and you're going to need to learn how they function and how they work and of course for all of the gui lovers as in graphical user interface you're not really going to prioritize that as much and that's understandable which is why this exists tldr these are, and I quote, simplified and community-driven manual pages for commands and applications. So there is a live demo right here, which you can try, and you can go to this website whenever you want to try this live demo. However, you can also install the TLDR application as so. Sudo as in do this shit, apt as in install this shit with app, and install it as in give it to me and then TLDR. Now as you can see the fish shell was actually snitching on me because I had installed this and tested it prior just to make sure it worked so I got snitched on but that's alright. That just shows that the fish shell is mighty useful and you should probably get it so you can see your history. I'm going to install TLDR. Now what you gotta do is put TLDR and then hyphen hyphen update and this will update all of the commands that it has. Now it's giving me this message, but that's because I already updated it. So now if I put TLDR and I put any command I want, so nano, it gives me a short explanation of how to use nano, which is fucking amazing, I know. If I put TLDR of sudo, it gives me a short explanation of how to use sudo, fucking amazing, I know. If I do TLDR, let's say TLDR, it gives me a short explanation of how to use fucking TLDR. Just put TLDR and it'll give you a short explanation of any command that you want. This is by far one of the most useful utilities, and this has actually been suggested to me by this commenter. Anyways, with those little tips out of the way, I hope this has made your Linux experience just that much more user-friendly and easy to kind of navigate through. I will be making more videos in the future, and thank you for a thousand subscribers. I will not be doing a face reveal. Maybe. Who knows? Anyways, peace out.